Hi guys, this movie is going to quickly run you through some of the new features in the latest version of Softube's Console 1, which is currently version 2.1.45. First up, there have been some nice improvements to the renaming and rearranging of the plugin within the door. To show you this in live here, if I open up an instance of Console 1 on the first track here, you can see that it automatically names it to the same as the way I have my track named in the door here. So I now don't need to uh, punch it in manually myself, which is a nice improvement. It's also um, matched the track number, which it would normally do for the first instance anyway. But now if I move it to a uh, position later on on my mixer, you can see that it automatically changes the track for me there. Um, so the layout of tracks uh, within console one now automatically matches whatever is going on inside your door as well as the name, which is a nice improvement. In doors that don't have the automatic rearranging facility, there's a nice quick workaround. So for example, if I add a new track after all my drum tracks here and I name it Clave, when I insert console one onto that track, what happens is it renames it Clave for me automatically, but it doesn't position it in the same place um, as on the Logic Pro mixer. As you can see, if I open up console one here, just enlarge that so you can see it. So yeah, it's placed it at the end of all of my tracks here. If instead I want it to be placed in the same places within Logic Pro, so straight after my tambourine, there's a quick workaround. You just go into settings, choose uh, rearrange tracks, select the track you want to move, so my clave, select where you want to move it to, which is track seven. And now it's placed it exactly the same way as in Logic Pro, straight after the tambourine, and it's shifted up all of the other instances of console one automatically for me. Also in the settings menu now is an option for setting the auto display delay which is the amount of time that the GUI is displayed for when in auto mode. So that's now fully customizable, which is really nice because I thought it was a bit brief before. So now you can set it to say four seconds. Then when I set it to auto mode and adjust to control, the GUI will pop up automatically uh, for four seconds before disappearing. Also on the display side, if I solo a track now, you can see we get all of the LEDs flashing on the other tracks to show that they're muted. So it's immediately obvious that a track's solo and which one it is. And within the software, you can see on the bridge now, we actually get gain reduction meters for any tracks that have gain reduction being applied. So you can see immediately, no matter what track is selected, uh, the gain reduction that's going on in your mix. On the preset side of things, there have been two main changes. One is the ability to save your own default settings now for a particular channel strip. This is done in the same way as before, so if you save your preset and then click OK, now all you'd need to do is type in default and then hit save for that preset. And then when you load up that particular channel strip, these are the settings that would load with that. In this case though, all I'm gonna do is save it as a user preset, which I'm gonna copy over to another channel. And that's just to show you now the changes to the way that presets are now organized. If I go to Finder, you can see that you can now create your own folders uh, to put presets in. So if I want to put this vocal preset in here now, um, now if I go to a different track in my mix and I want to load it up, I just go presets, user presets, channel strip, and then you can see uh, my different folders there. So if you have a lot of different presets, it just makes it easier to keep them organized and instantly recall them. And the final major update with this release was the launch of a brand new SSL channel strip emulation, in addition to the 4000. Now the 4000 comes with console one, um, but the new XL9000K emulation needs to be bought separately. And once you've done that, you can load it up by going to factory channel strip, 9000K. I'll just load up the default settings. I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, um, but it's alleged to have a much smoother sound than the 4000, and so is more suited to styles like R&B, hip hop, and even going as far as classical. On the control side of things, the EQ section is 
more or less the same as on the 4000, um, but the shape and compressor sections are slightly different. The shape section is now, uh, rather than being a shaper and a gate, is now just a more comprehensive gate, which has a hold and uh, range control. Um, and the compressor can be set to one of two modes, either peak or RMS, which are loaded up in the same way as I showed you before. So we go to load comp, and then you can see in the list we have two different 9000K compressors, either peak or RMS. So you can choose the one you want, depending on whether you want precise or slightly subtler, more musical compression. And then finally, on the end there, we've got a drive dial. So although the sound overall is smoother, if you want to apply a little bit of saturation on the end, then you can do that using this dial, which can be set to either a, a tube-like or transistor-like sound with the, with the character dial. So I look forward to testing this out on my mixes that I've got coming up, and I'll be sure to make some movies when I do this, so keep an eye out for those. See you next time.